Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. In this podcast, we will look at the benefits for EU citizens from more ambitious and united EU action in the single market for goods and services. In its latest study, The Cost of Non-Europe in an Age of Global Challenges, the European Parliament finds that more EU action in 50 policy areas could bring large gains to EU society. Want to know more? Stay with us. For over half a century now, European integration has been a key driver of economic growth, environmental protection, peace and social prosperity. And one of Europe's landmark achievements is without a doubt the single market. It generates benefits for millions of businesses and consumers every day. But despite the already high level of integration, single market rules continue to need better implementation and enforcement as excessive complexity, unnecessary national requirements, different labelling standards and other administrative burdens are still hampering trade and investment inside the EU. Tackling these obstacles and focusing on areas where the single market needs further deepening and strengthening could boost intra-EU trade in goods and bring economic benefits of at least €228 billion Euros per year by 2032. But the single market is not only about goods. It's also about services, people and capital moving freely across the EU. Actually, services account for three quarters of EU gross domestic product and a similar share of its employment, creating nine out of every ten new jobs in the EU. So, a well-functioning EU services market is key to boosting employment opportunities, free movement, investment and innovation in Europe. The COVID-19 pandemic and Brexit have recalled the value of the progress made so far. The war in Ukraine is stressing the importance of further developing the single market integration, in particular the cross-border provision of services which is still largely underdeveloped, as distortions induced by national home buyers, insufficient harmonization and administrative burdens persist. So, there's much to be gained from more common EU actions. According to the Parliament's study on the costs of non-Europe, at least €279 billion Euros per year. And the benefits are not only of an economic nature. Completing the single market for services is an integral part of the path towards more security, resilience and a quicker and more sustainable recovery. The single market also identifies and protects products that have a specific geographical origin and possess qualities or a reputation that are due to that origin. For example, Bolislavic ceramics or Murano glass. Currently, these so-called geographical indications are protected at EU level for agricultural products, but not for non-agricultural ones. So protecting such products could not only increase trade, but also contribute to create employment, additional services and investment, in particular in rural areas, improving livelihoods and potentially bringing benefits of about 11 billion euros per year. And at the heart of all this, there's us. European consumers. The EU already has some of the more advanced rules on consumer protection in the world. The digital transitions, as well as the COVID-19 pandemic, have stressed the need to adapt the existing rules to new realities and changes in consumer behaviour. To respond to these new challenges, we can empower consumers by providing them with information on product durability, software updates and facilitating access to repair. Practices leading to early obsolescence should be banned. Finally, product safety rules should be updated in light of new technologies. According to the EPRS report, enhancing consumer protection in selected policy areas could bring benefits of up to €22 billion Euros per year. Now, if consumers lie at the centre of the internal market, transport is what allows people and goods to move around freely within it. Transport indeed plays a key role in operationalising the single market's free movement. However, the creation of a single European transport area is still far from complete. Moreover, many other challenges hampering transport effectiveness remain, such as infrastructure bottlenecks, poor connections in cross-border regions or the slow development of multimodality. 
Furthermore, ambitious new goals were recently set at EU level to further decarbonise the sector. The European Commission also concluded that boosting the transport network would require EU-level investments in the order of €188 billion Euros between 2025 and 2050. The Parliament's study estimates that effective action to tackle these challenges could generate at least €10 billion Euros per year. All these actions called for by the European Parliament in the single market area, combined with others we've not included in this podcast to address the corporate income tax gap and combat VAT fraud, could generate economic benefits of at least €644 billion a year by 2032. Here's Lenka Yangchova from the European Parliamentary Research Service. These benefits would mainly stem from the improved free movement of goods, services, capital and people within the EU. The EU action would help to ensure a level playing field where more competition, efficiency and economies of scale allow for a better use of resources. It would also lead to a greater protection of the rights to conduct a business, increased legal certainty and fairness in taxation. Finally, thanks to EU action, consumers would be better protected and environmental standards better safeguarded. Want to know more? Check out the full report on mapping the cost of non-Europe on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.